Today, I would like to share with you a very, very important scripture that will truly help you to live fruitfully and powerfully, friends. And before I share that scripture with you, I want to tell you something. Satan does not want you to know this particular scripture because it is the very basis of our salvation and how we can, be, and how we can walk victoriously in Christ Jesus, friends. This verse is taken from Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to 15. It goes like this. It says, And God, who raised you from the dead, you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having cancelled the bond which stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside by nailing it to the cross. He then disarmed the principalities and powers and made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them through the cross. I shall go back to verse 13, friend, because I just relish this particular verse. It says here, And you who were dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive. In Christ Jesus. Now, isn't that marvelous, friends? We who were dead in our trespasses and in the uncircumcision of our flesh, God made alive through Christ Jesus. That's exactly for all the sins that we may have committed in the past, friends. So, in this particular, just three verses, there is provision for our past, for our present, and for the future. And believe me, friends, Satan does not want you to know this particular verse because it brings unto us an enlightenment of the power and the victory that Jesus had won for each of us personally on the cross. So the past for the past, it's verse 13 where we were dead and sinful then, but God forgave us in Christ Jesus. And for the present right now, friends, the Bible says, let me just read that to you. Eh? He cancelled the bond which stood against us and opposed us. Now, the bond in this particular verse refers to the law of Moses, friends. And in, in Christ Jesus, we do not come under the law of Moses, but we come under the law of righteousness through faith in Jesus. Now, say, think about it very carefully, friends. We come, we are no more under the law of Moses, but we are subject to the law of righteousness through faith in Christ Jesus, Father. So that's an amazing fact. He says he cancelled the bond with all its legal demands. This he set aside by nailing it to the cross. That means for everything that the law demanded that we, would, that we should observe, Christ Jesus took it upon himself as he was nailed to the cross, friends. That means we are no more under the law, under the Mosaic law, friends. Now, that's amazing fact, friends, because if you are ever feeling guilty, friends, if you think that you are in a sinful state, my call to you right now is to repent. Repent through the sacrament of reconciliation. And if that's not possible, repent and ask for the blood of Jesus to completely cleanse each one of us. God never, never fails to provide that kind of cleansing. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says very clearly, he, If I confess my sins, He is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Now, isn't that a marvelous, marvelous provision, friends? Absolutely marvelous. And this is the same way, friends, that with the legal bond, the bond with its, all its legal demands, he was, it was nailed to the cross, never to be brought forth anymore as an accusation against any one of us who are in Christ Jesus, friends. 
who are in Christ Jesus. I just love that phrase, in Christ Jesus, friends, because all of my life I know I believe and I want it to be in Christ Jesus. And for the future, friends, for the future, where we, where we, we would think, oh, we're going to sin some more. So what's, what's the provision for that? He says there, he further disarmed all the principalities and powers. Imagine that for a moment, friends, and ponder it very literally. He disarmed all the principalities and powers and he made a public spectacle of them. Number one from this verse, what I gather is simply this, that Satan has absolutely now no more weapons to assail us in any manner. I'm going to say that again, friends, because it's the truth that is very seldom ex expounded. Satan has no more weapons to assail us anymore because the Bible says very clearly that he disarmed all the principalities and all the powers and he made a public spectacle of them. Now, what does this public spectacle simply mean, friends? It simply means this. Paul is writing from a very Roman context and he was using the analogy of Roman generals, victorious Roman generals, coming back after, the, after a victorious war. And when they rode into Rome, they would ride on this white, blazing white horse. And behind them would be all the captives, the kings, the princesses that they had, that already they had captured. They would all be shackled, you know, and they would all be chained and they'd be walking right behind them. And even right be behind them further still would be all the booty and the plunder that this particular general had, had, had captured, friends. This is exactly what Paul writes here as he says, he made a public spectacle of them. In the same way as the Roman general makes a public spectacle of all of his plunders, Jesus Christ on the cross, which he won for each one of us, he made a public spectacle of Satan and all of his minions of demons, friends, so that they would, they would be completely so exposed to show us that they had absolutely, absolutely no weapons anymore to attack and assail us in any manner, friends. He did this, the Bible says, by triumphing over them through his cross. You know, friends, it's really very sad that so many of us Catholics and Christians, we do not actually understand the fullness of the cross that Jesus bore for each one of us. There is tremendous power, there is tremendous provision, and there is tremendous healing through this cross, friends. I want to share with you another word, friends, that says here, in Romans 10, 4, Romans 10, 4, it says here, it is Christ who is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Now, if you think about the marvels that God has done for each of us in our lives, friends, and you think about His infinite goodness, friends, it will just simply blow our minds. All we need to do, friends, is to come to God in faith through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. All we need to do that. We do not have to be academically qualified. We do not have to be talented. We do not have to have great physique or beauty, you know, in body and, and in looks. We do not have to be gifted. All God is asking for each one of us is to have a heart that is yearning and longing for Him. And when we come to Him in that manner, with a desire for Him, for Jesus, to become the Lord, Savior, and Master of my life, God is never, never going to turn away, friends, because He loves us tremendously. I can't find a really good English word to express the extremity of the infinite goodness of God's love. God says this very, very powerfully. He tells through Jeremiah, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you into my loving kindness. Which God, friends, I ask you, has made such a pronouncement, friends? Which God loves people like me and you? Nobody is like you, me and you. You know, there's, 
my member of parliament doesn't even know me. He doesn't even know I exist. But there is this God in heaven, friends, this God of gods, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He knows me in and out. He knows me by name, friends. And standing on this kind of a promise, friends, we must always confess the power that is available to each one of us in Christ Jesus, friends. It is in Christ Jesus that we stand proud and boldly before all kinds of attacks that may assail us in any manner, friends. And I just want to share with you another thing. How is it that we can be so bold about these kind of things? The Bible gives us these answers, friends. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, St. Paul writes, okay, for God made Jesus to be sin for us. Jesus, who knew absolutely no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I repeat that, friends, because it is an amazing prayer to make every day in our prayer line, friends. For God made Jesus to be sin for us. Jesus, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Three main points, friends, in that particular verse. God made Jesus to be sin. That's one we must need to remember. We must remember also that Jesus had absolutely no sin, friends. He was totally sinless, yet he was willing to accept all of our sin to be upon him. And think about it, friends. He accepted the sin of entire humanity down through the ages, how many trillions and zillions of people have lived and will continue to live, Jesus took it upon his body on the cross. And not just to, just to provide us this act of salvation, but he wanted to raise us up to a level in which it would be so pleasing unto God. So the, St. Paul tells us through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that he made us the righteousness of God himself in Christ Jesus. Not just any righteousness, not just the righteousness of good saints, not just the righteousness of popes, you know, not just the righteousness of holy people, but the very righteousness of God that is available in each one of us, that when God looks upon us, He is so thoroughly delighted, friends. Isn't that an amazing, an amazing provision and promise of God? And lastly, friends, uh, I just want to share with you, this outworking of this victory for Jesus, it comes to us simply by faith. We simply have to believe. We simply believe, friends, and then we will receive these powerful promises of God that we will become the sons and daughters of God. We must come to the point, friends, where we will be able to say to God, You are my God, for I am your child, your son, your daughter. And that's an absolutely amazing relationship because that's exactly, friends, the relationship that God wants to bring us into it the relationship that we would share, that we would become heirs and co-heirs with Christ Jesus. Remember, friends, these words also, heirs and co-heirs with Christ Jesus. There is a wonderful promise, friends, that I want to share with you also, finally, in this particular sharing. This is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, and it, I think it comes from, let me just double check, it comes from verse 13 and goes on to say, it says that we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. And I believe you believe that too. We have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now this Holy Spirit, it says here, is the guarantee of our inheritance until we take possession of it. Now think about it, friends. The Holy Spirit that lives in you and me, He is the seal of the guarantee of the inheritance that God has promised each one of us until the very moment we take possession of it. It simply goes to show that God is never, never going to leave us alone or often. He will always have the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit is the guarantee that there is a place reserved for each one of us in Christ Jesus in heaven. We just need to go there to claim this inheritance, friends. And I want to just end this by saying, friends, the Bible provides us all of these opportunities, friends, to know God personally, 
to encounter him in a personal relationship. Therefore, friends, I urge you, please go into the word, read the word, meditate the word, pray the word, understand the word and receive it with meekness, friends. Receive it with the humility that God has ordained for each one of us. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. My dear friends, I am here, the Archbishop of Manila, Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle, in order to encourage you to follow the programs of Shalom World TV. Be evangelized and learn how to be an evangelizer yourself. Please support Shalom World TV. Shalom World, God's own channel.